What's going on guys, Super Savage uh, 789 here, bringing you guys a video. Today we're doing Water Galactic Patrol Race Goku, Episode 4. So without further ado, let's get into today's video. Once the cuffs are placed on the unconscious Ginyus, and the fighters have given three sensor beams to the three beaten, Kakarot decides that he'll go and stop their leader then. Nail is about to go with him and the rest of them, until he senses Freezer approaching Guru. He takes off at a high speed for the sacrificial safety mission. The five all fly over to Freezer's ship, where Kakarot and Ginyu face each other down. The Saiyan and the soldier begin fighting, with Kakarot easily overpowering Ginyu. It ultimately ends with Kakarot losing his body though. Meanwhile, the other four begin carrying away the Dragon Balls once finding them, and hides them nearby when Ginyu arrives. Krillin easily beats him down using the Kaioken, which ultimately leaves the Kakarot getting his body back. Before Ginyu can switch bodies yet again, Jekko leaps up behind him and plays a on his arms, suppressing his key making him plummet to the ground unconscious, dying. Realising that Ginyu is on death's door, Kakarot asks him to use a wish on the dragon to heal Ginyu. They are reluctant, but after a desperate plea they accept. Jacko speaks in Namekian and uses the three wishes in quick succession. Heal Ginyu, heal Kakarot, and teleport away all the Freezer soldiers to Galactic Prison. He teleports away everyone except Ginyu, due to him being stronger than the dragon and being conscious enough to make sure the dragon doesn't teleport him. Freezer arrives to see Ginyu vanish and is very angry. He sees Ginyu and cuts and is enraged, firing a death beam to kill him. Jacko dies on Ginyu and tackles him to the ground, so the beam misses everyone, but Ginyu is still upset. Kakarot begins to fight Freezer, and after the Zenkai placed him at 6,700,000, he easily overpowers Freezer. Naturally, Freezer begins to transform whenever the chance presents itself, but his third and second form are simply useless. Freezer manages to knock Kakarot away with a lucky shot, and goes into his final form, where he finally turns the tide in the battle, which everyone notices. Draco tells them that they need to save Kakarot, asking if anyone has any ideas. Krillin brings up his Genki Dharma, however it will take too long to charge, and Kakarot may die if he stares at that for too long. Please allow me to help you all. They fall silent and look at Ginyu, who is on one knee, begging to help. They refuse, claiming how he just tried to kill them, but Ginyu exclaims that Freezer just tried to kill him. Well, they just saved him. He'll die anyway, so what's the harm? Reluctantly, they free him. Ginyu rushes over and lands a cheap shot on Freezer, whose eyes stare at him enraged. He would have made Ginyu scream out in pain with a bunch of blasts, but Kakarot came in to help. Both of them fight off Freezer and get to slowly get tortured by him, but they're managing to survive. Before he can kill anyone, Tian fires a Kikoho to push Freezer into a crater, and Yamcha fires a Kamehameha, pushing him down further. Freezer flew back up unharmed, but unluckily for him, he didn't see the massive blue ball of Genki behind him. He turns just in time to watch as it impacted him, seemingly killing him. Everyone began to celebrate as Kakarot thanked Ginyu for his help. Then a death beam pierced Ginyu's chest, missing any organs but taking him out of commission. Everyone turns to see Freezer as he slowly raises Jacko off the ground. Kakarot watches in pain as he sees his father figure detonate in the air, dead. This awoke the Super Saiyan transformation of legend within Kakarot, as he stared at Freezer, eyes of malice. He told everyone to escape on his ship, which they nod at, flying away with Ginyu. They get in and lead back to Earth as quickly as possible. Kakarot beats into Freezer, taking his time to hurt him. Nevertheless, his cockiness isn't as potent, so he won't allow Freezer to power up or blow up the planet's core. Once he sees Freezer has suffered enough, he knocks him out and cuffs him, looking at him with pity and rage. Kakarot walks over to Freezer's ship and gets inside, driving it back to the Galactic Patrol headquarters. Once placing Freezer into prison, the Galactic King finds Kakarot, enraged at what he's done. He wants to take away Kakarot's Galactic Badge, and subsequently, not make him part of the Galactic Patrol any longer, but everyone around him gave him an applause. He just stopped Freezer, one of the biggest threats in the universe. He also brought back a lot of high-ranking soldiers. His bus would look good on them overall. Hearing this makes the Galactic King rethink his situation. Said he realises that Kakarot probably had a better backbone than him, and he could probably bring peace to the galaxy. So Kakarot becomes the leader of the Galactic Patrol. Kakarot travelled back to Earth where he arrived on the lookout with the other fighters. Due to everything Kakarot has done, Kami awakened Shenron early and revived everyone Freezer and his force had killed, which brought back Jacko on Namek. Jacko took his ship off Namek and arrived back at headquarters where he awaited Kakarot's return. Meanwhile, Nail killed Zarbon when finding him since he did work for Freezer and thus didn't deserve to live. Back on Earth, Kakarot looked at the Earthlings and tells them that they should become more co independent, and the Galactic Patrol will always be there to defend them from world-breaking threats. 
You also asked Ginyu if he'd like to join the Galactic Patrol, so he seemed like he had a change in heart. Ginyu accepts, and so the duo return to headquarters, where Jocko and Kakarot engage in a hug. Kakarot begins to lead the Galactic Patrol and Crusades around the galaxy, taking out the rest of the Freezer Force and placing them in prison. Just because Kakarot was a leader, didn't mean that he never entered the battlefield, in fact, far from it. Eventually, Kakarot, Ginyu, and Jocko, as well as a few high-ranking elites, arrive on Cold Capital Planet, find the king in his throne room, with Targum and Shisami either side of him. Kakarot powered up to Super Saiyan, and engages in battle with the king, as everyone else fought off his army. Easily, Kakarot overpowered Cold, and hastened him in cuts, taking him to prison, making the Galactic Patrol look even better as a whole. On Earth, the three Earthlings begin training hard to defend that planet. They share techniques, with Tien and Yamcha both learning the Kaioken, as well as Yamcha learning the Four Witches technique. Boma ends up developing a gravity chamber for the three, who use it so they can get even better games than originally. Chops and Roshi were trained together as well, so they could fight with someone in their league and both get decent games. Trunks would want to begin training, however Yamcha is busy training with the others and his son would slow them all down. So Yamcha takes Trunks with him on a road trip to Mount Pelzu, where he finds his old master Gohan. And having lunch with the old man, Yamcha explains everything that happened since the last time they met, ultimately asking if he'll train Trunks, which he agrees to. He'd end up training the boy like Roshi trained his students, and although he isn't anywhere near the rest of them, he's learning the essentials. Kami would want to get stronger so he can defend his planet due to being embarrassed at it, and Ailey has to say his planet too many times to count. This was his planet, and he'll learn how to protect on his own. He'd enter the hyperbolic time chamber and do a bit of training at the time, before exiting to recover from the harsh environment. He was an old man, so he wouldn't be able to fully handle it for a whole year, as well as his psyche not breaking. At least Akami becoming strong enough to hold his own in a fight, if need be. He considers returning his youth, however he thinks that it should be a last case scenario, as he preferably does not want to abuse the power of his orbs. In space, during a mission, Kakarot begins to clench his chest in pain, and suddenly collapses, accidentally letting the criminal escape. He'd be rushed to a medical bay at Galactic Patrol Headquarters, but they see he has a heart virus that's slowly killing him. Thankfully, space technology is far more advanced, so they'd probably be even able to synthesize an antidote and Kakarot is restored better than ever. Kakarot would occasionally go to Earth and check in on how everyone is, as well as the occasional spy match with the humans. Jaku would introduce Kakarot to his friend, Tights, and the duo would hit it off very quickly. In fact, he'd end up impregnating her, where she'd have a kid named Boxer. Kakarot would love visiting his son to see him, however slowly over time it becomes harder and harder for him. Boxer would hear stories of his father, being a space warrior, and would train so he can impress him. They'd see each other on occasion through video chats, however again, these two become few and far between, due to Kakarot being so busy. But guys, that's the Olivia, make sure like and subscribe and comment below to go in the next episode. This is turning out to be quite the timeline, and episode 5 is going to be really crazy, so make sure you stay tuned for that, and uh, yeah. Bye!